In this video, we're going to take a look at logarithmic and exponential functions with a base other than e. So this is not natural log or the natural exponential function, but bases other than e, both derivatives and integrals. When you are finding the derivative of an exponential or logarithmic function, you can either use the definitions of a to the x and log base a of x, and then differentiate just using all of the rules you already know. You can use logarithmic differentiation, which we've already learned how to do, or, and this is the way that we're going to look at in this video, is we're going to take a look at the differenti differentiation rules for bases other than E given here. So as always, there's one for if it's A to the X, where X is not a function, where we're going to have the natural log of A, so the natural log of the base, and then we're repeating a to the x. Same thing over here, if it's a to the u, indicating that u has its own derivative, it's still the natural log of the base, and then a to the u, and then whatever the derivative of the function u is. So again, that's for an exponential function with a base other than e. For a logarithmic function for a base other than e, the result is one over the natural log of the base times x, or the one over the natural log of the base times u, and then the derivative of u. So let's look at a few of those practice questions. Again, I have those rules written for us at the top so that we can see exactly how to apply them. For our first question, we have y equals two to the x. So obviously this is just a natural, I'm sorry, an exponential function where the exponent does not have its own derivative. So y prime is going to be the natural log of the base. In this case, that's the natural log of 2. And then the base to the power of x, so 2 to the x. And that's all I have to do. For the second question, same idea, except now I have a derivative for my exponent. So 2x is the exponent, and the derivative of 2x is 2. So if I'm finding the derivative of this, I'm taking the natural log of the base, so that's the natural log of three, and then I'm rewriting the original question, three to the two x, and then I'm writing the derivative of two x, which is two. So typically I would write the two in front, so two natural log of three, and then three to the two x. For our last question, Obviously we're dealing now with a logarithmic function and cosine of X does have its own derivative. So we're looking right here. So if I'm taking the derivative of log base five of cosine of X, I'm taking, remember the base is five. So it's one over the natural log of the base. And then U, U would be cosine of X. So feel free to rewrite that if you need to, cosine X. And then I'm going to take it times the derivative of u. Well, if u is cosine of x, what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine of x. So my final solution would be negative sine x over natural log of 5 cosine x. Let's take a look at a couple of more difficult questions than what we just did. So for the first question, it's only more difficult because I actually have the product of two functions. So I'm going to have to use the product rule as well as the new rules we just learned. So when I do the product rule, if you'll recall, I'm going to take the first function times the derivative of the second function and then plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. So for the first term of my sum, I have x squared and I have the derivative of two to the four x. So that's where I'm going to use this property right here. I've got a base other than e to a power that has an exponent. So I'm going to say that is multiplied by the natural log of the base of two times two to the four x times the derivative of four x, which is four. And for my second term, 
I've got 2 to the 4x, and then I've got the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So from here, there's not a whole lot to do. I'm going to write the 4 and the x squared together. So 4x squared, natural log of 2, 2 to the 4x. Oops. And I'm going to write 2x first and then 2 to the 4x. And you could argue that you could take a 2x and a 2 to the 4x out of everything. And if you want to do that, feel free. Um, but really, it's not going to make your solution much prettier. Same thing, you could argue that you could take this 2 and move it over here, and that would make it 4x plus 1. Uh, but again, it's not really helping. So I'm going to leave my solution just like that. For my second question, this one is not a product or a quotient, except that I'm taking the log of a quotient. So hopefully we all know that if you're taking the logarithm of a quotient, you should go ahead and rewrite that. So I'm going to write this um, again as log base 3, and this is x squared, so I'm going to write 2 log base 3 of x. And then because it's a quotient, I'm going to subtract and then log base 3 of x plus 2. Now, so that was not the derivative. That was just me doing a rewrite. So notice that was y. Now I'm going to start differentiating. So what is 2 times log base 3 of x? Well, that's going to be just this. So I'm going to have 2 and then the natural log of the base, which is 3 and then x. That's for my first term. For my second term, I'm going to, again, use that same function. So I have 1, and then the natural log of 3, and then this is x plus 2. Now, it's always a good idea to be able to write that as one fraction. So here I am going to take this times x plus 2, and x plus 2, and this times x, and times x. And that is going to give me 2x plus 4 minus x in my numerator, and x, x plus 2, natural log of 3 in my denominator which is going to reduce to 2x minus x is just x. So x plus 4 over x, x plus 2, natural log of 3. And I would leave it just like that. When we integrate, we need to remember that if we're integrating, we have to make sure that if our exponent has a derivative, that that's included. So I've included a to the x dx in my function but that's the same as a to the u du. So if the exponent has its own derivative, we're using a to the u du. So a very straightforward example is this first one. As you can see, the exponent is x, the derivative of x is one, so we don't have to worry. So this is going straight to my solution as one over the natural log of the base of three, and I'm multiplying that, let me put the parentheses on the other, times three to the x, plus c. And typically I would probably go ahead and write 3 to the x in the numerator, so this would be my final solution. For my second question, as you can see, this one is a little bit tougher. I do, in fact, have an exponent with a derivative. So here's where I'm going to use u as whatever the exponent is. And then I'm going to find the derivative of u with respect to x, right, which is 2x, I'm going to move that dx to the other side. So I have du equals 2x dx. So I'm going to rewrite this, but in order for me to use du, I need 2x dx, and right now I just have 1x dx. So I take the 2 on the inside, counterbalance it with a 1 half on the outside. So I have 1 half the integral of 3 to the u du. The solution is 1 half and then now I'm just using this pattern, which gives me 3 to the u over the natural log of 3 plus c. And then I'm going to rewrite by plugging that u back in. So 3 to the x squared 
divided by 2 natural log of 3 plus c. That's my final answer. And last one. I have u. I have 4 to the x plus 2 quantity squared. So that's u is x plus 2 quantity squared. I should have left myself a little bit more room. So if u is the exponent, which is x plus 2 quantity squared, then du is 2 times x plus 2 um, to the first power dx. Now that works out pretty well because as we can see, I have an x plus 2 dx. So I just need a 2 and a 1 half. So now I'm integrating 1 half times the integral. I've got 2 to the x plus 2 dx, so that's my du, and I have just 4 to the u. So that u substitution actually makes this a very easy question. So now I've got the solution of, or the integral of 4 to the u du is 4 to the u divided by the natural log of 4 plus c. And then I simply replace uh, not 1, I'm sorry, I need 4 to the u, which was 4 to the x plus 2 quantity squared, divided by 2 times the natural log of 4 plus c. And that is my final solution. Let's take a look now at an application of exponential functions. So we all like to make as much money as we can, well most of us do, and Obviously, dealing with interest, whether you're paying interest or earning interest, that's something you need to pay attention to. So we're going to take a look at the formula that is used for calculating A. And A just stands for the accumulated value. So that's how much is in the account. So that would include the principal P, however much you put in the account, plus any interest that is earned. And of course, the interest that you earn depends on how many times per year that interest is compounded. So when we're talking about compounding, we're saying if you're compounded monthly, then at the end of every month, anything that you earned in interest is going to get plugged back in as principal, and now you're going to earn interest on your interest. So compounding is a great thing if you are investing money, and it is a horrible thing, obviously, if you are borrowing money. So let's take a look at this function. This function says to find the accumulated value, you start with the principal, and then you take 1 plus r over n. So r is the rate, and we're going to write the rate as a percentage, um, as a decimal. So for instance, 5.5% is 0 0.055. And then n is the number of times that the interest is compounded. So monthly, n would be 12. Daily, n would be 365, 365 days in a year. So if I'm investing $10,000 at the annual interest rate of 5.5%, how much do I have at the end of one year, which is t? Well, as you can see, I've already calculated this for you. If I compound it monthly, then at the end of the year, I've made $564.08, but I have a total of $10,564.08. Now, if I compound daily instead, I earn almost the same amount, but just a touch more. Now, we're going to take a look at that same formula again, but now we're going to use calculus. So what we have is we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power is actually going to give us a limit of e. Now, why is that important? Because let's take a look at the formula that we use to find the accumulated value of a function. This inside portion right here looks very, very similar to what we have here. But now we have an x in the denominator and to the x power. So what if instead I took the n divided by r and then the n divided by r, but then of course if I divide by r in the exponent, I also have to multiply by r in the exponent, and that is how we end up here. 
Now, again, why is that helpful? Because now this portion has a limit of E. So that brings us to this formula, A equals P E to the RT, which gives us the accumulated value if we compound continuously, which means every time you earn anything in interest, it goes back into that function again, and you're earning more interest immediately. So let's just do a quick practice comparing the interest if I invested 15,000 for 20 years, compounded daily, which again, that means N is 365, or compounded continuously, both at 6%. So for my first function, I would have the 15,000 for the principal, one plus R, which is uh, five, 6%, so 0.06, divided by n, that's 365, all to the 365 times 20 years. And if I just plug that straight into my calculator, I get $49,796.84. So that is compounded daily. Now let's take a look at compounded continuously. Principal is the same, 15,000. I have E, and now to the R, R is 0 0.06 and T is 20. Again, just utilizing my calculator, I get $49,801.75. So not a huge difference, but again, let's say it was compounded yearly instead, you could certainly see that there would be a big difference in the amount that you're earning. Coming up next, we're going to explore indeterminate forms.